tension continue to rise in the Niger Republic. Mali and Burkina Faso have dispatched warplanes to the West African country in a show of solidarity against possible military intervention by the economic community of West African states ECOWAS. Burkina Faso and Mali, both under the military leadership, previously released a statement of support for Niger against the planned ECOWAS military operation to alter the course of coup in Niger. Hello, my great and wonderful people. How on a day today? I hope all of a day well. Today we get some videos for our team. We're going to be saying one quickly, the living make you watch concerning the things we're going to be saying if they happen right now for inside this country, Nigeria. As day they break, now so the tension for Niger, they go higher. And also the people want to be saying they stand Gidigba behind Niger. They showcase their own readiness to make sure see they combat anybody or any nation when it be said they want forcefully enter Niger, most especially the Ekoa blocks. And now, just as you don't already see some videos from the introduction, how it be said Mali and Burkina Faso, just as they promise, send their own war play and also their own war equipment to Niger to get ready for anybody when they see the one try to do anyhow for the country. Although we'll leave you to watch the video shortly and also the interview when they see one of the major general, although retire of this country, Nigeria, take come aside for this very morning for Arise News to give us total breakdown on everything when they say we need to know concerning this uproar when ABC is the warm up for Niger and all the West Africa country. All right, before we bring you the full interview by Major General Haruna retired when ABC is grants to arise news this very morning, we'll first of all leave you to see this very video where ABC the troop of Mali and Burkina Faso they arrive for Niger before you will see the one when they basically they release their own world play. Watch this one first, we'll come back for more. <laughs>
right, my great and wonderful people. I believe say all of them don't see the video, but on a safe for the one when they see that they arrive by land and the one when they see that they prepare for air. We we'll still leave you to watch everything for this very interview. When we say this major general Haruna retire, to break everything down for us for this Arise News interview for this very money. As tension continues to rise in the Niger Republic, Mali and Burkina Faso have dispatched warplanes to the West African country in a show of solidarity against possible military intervention by the economic community of West African states ECOWAS. Burkina Faso and Mali, both under the military leadership, previously released a statement of support for Niger against the planned ECOWAS military operation to alter the course of coup in Niger. It warned that any intervention will be seen as a declaration of war against Burkina Faso and Mali. General Abdurrahman Tichani, the former commander of Niger's Presidential Guard, declared himself last month the head of a transitional government after President Mohamed Bazoum was ousted by a military coup. Joining us to discuss this latest development around the situation in Niger is Major General Ibrahim Batamalgui Harunov, popularly known as IBM Harunov, a former Commissioner for Information and Culture and also the former Chairman and Executive Council of Arawa Consultative Forum. Welcome to the show, sir, and good to see you once again, the famous Major General IBM Harunov. Good to see you and good to talk Very to you, Very much. Sir. It sounds like Rufai. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank You're a very you. good friend, good sir. Good morning. Morning, sir. Bless you, sir. So, yes, Rufai. Make, make sense of what is happening in Niger for us, sir. Well, if I have heard you clearly, I should make sense to you as what is happening in, in Niger with this conundrum with ECOWAS, with this, you know, conversation, diplomatic conversation as regards restoring Bazoum office now the copies have said that they will give them a three-year window to be able to do this ECOWAS is kicking against that and our thoughts about you know invading Niger and all of that make sense of all of this conundrum going on right um, thank you very much for inviting me we hear about what's going on through the media. And from what I hear, I try to put it in some kind of uh, context. And in my own perception of the, of the context in which these, these things are happening, starts from the end of the Second World War uh, where the conspiracies against African colonized countries had started. Because while the world was siding end of the, of the war and setting up the United Nations organization, the Western powers had laid down a charter of, uh, from which they have conspired by the look of it, to ensure that the negative the gains of African uh, 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 first colonial countries in their independence. The conspiracy seems to work in every cycle of uh, 50 years. And uh, in each cycle, um, the post-colonial uh, independent countries uh, make progress. But at the end of that cycle, things uh, developed in, in sort of a conspiracy to reverse uh, their gains in, the, in each of these cycles. In one cycle, um, the independent countries through patriotism and nationalism and their independence. The next cycle, they are being destroyed through coups um, and the new sets of uh, constitutions uh, are being uh, uh, set up. And I think in the present uh, context, the world order is being threatened with a change 
reversing from the bipolar world we, we had and um, the development through that to the present position where the United States of uh, American dollar is being threatened and the BRIC nations are setting up a challenge. Then the natural resource country like Africa that provides the resources for the development that um, are going on in uh, 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 technical uh, in the technical world, including the um, the communication and other technology uh, revolutions, have put them in a position where they feel threatened, and the world order that is pending will not probably be so much in, in favor uh, uh, to them. And they like to, to ensure that uh, they orchestrate this uh, uh, likelihood of the third, third World War or whatever World War we now move in, in Africa, where the resource base of future technologies are cited. And I think that um, to ensure that they succeed, they have planted their, their feet in, um, uh, in, in Niger, where some of the critical resources are found, which they have been exploiting. And I think to ensure that they dramatize the, 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 the new orchestration of um, entrenching themselves as dominant powers. They were all in, in Niger. They probably know about or planned the, the coup, which um, uh, they wish to see succeed in their own view to meet their, their, uh, you know, their ends. Because constitutionalism, which the ECOWAS are trying to, to go and uh, implant, it's not a constitution that was uh, created by, by foreigners. It's created by the independent um, uh, sovereign state of uh, Niger. They are, they are surrounded by other foreign, um, sorry, uh, non-constitutional uh, government. Uh, I dare say that uh, the, the real intent is to um, overthrow the constitutional uh, uh, governments um, and make it look as if uh, the other African countries and uh, ECOWAS uh, have real concern about the constitutionality of the, of the governments chosen right. by sovereign people uh, in, in their country. All right, sir. Right, General Hanno, thank so, you very much. My view really is that ECOWAS has no real business in mobilizing a war against the neighbors of uh, Nigeria, except to tarnish Nigeria um, in its good relationship and prospects in the world economy and other of, uh, of things that are going on. All right, okay. I hear you. Thank you, General Haruna. But let me ask a question. ECOWAS, in their last deliberation with regards to the heads of state and government in Abuja, had said they were going to explore the diplomatic channel to the extent to which Niger is willing to dialogue. And in the event that fails, they didn't rule out military action. Now, um, the Nigeria, uh, General Abdurrahman Chiani has said he needs a transition time of three years, which ECOWAS have said is not going to work. What's your take on this? Is Niger playing hardball? At, at, at least ECOWAS has tried to dialogue with them, tried to open that communication in terms of diplomacy. But the Nigerian uh, hunter is not giving, making it easy. Three years transition, does that make sense? I, I, I must confess that your audio is really not very clear in my ears, but I can take from the lines of what I gather is um, 
that the, 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 the ECOWAS are playing, uh, after their sanctions, are planning uh, a, a military uh, invasion. Let me, let me um, ask in simpler well, terms. Well, my, my view really is that... Can I ask in, simpler, in a simpler and, term? Well... I was just asking you to respond. No, I understand you. I understand you. Let, let, let me just learn. Okay, so to the three-year transition period. I believe that the, the government's program, the, the, the three years transition program or yes. how many years transition program yes. is the sovereign right of the Nigerian government with their people. So uh, the, the, the invasion cannot be legitimized merely because we are opposed to the process which they have taken as a sovereign people to evolve their own constitution. Um, so I, I think in the first place, having recognized the government and knowing that they are operating within the sovereign rights of, of their people, it is for the people to say, I don't think that the mandate of ECOWAS as an economic community includes imposing themselves on a sovereign country and trying to play the power game of politics as if the United States of uh, America in the world or France, as the case may be, their, their, their past colonial matters. All right, General. Um, I think if you recognize the sovereignty of the people, you recognize their government, you are negotiating with them, you have not exhausted the diplomatic negotiations uh, uh, with them. And I don't think it is either the right of ECOWAS to legitimize uh, and impose a government or a constitution of the people of Niger. And I think the issue of the war I've dismissed, dismissed as they have no mission that is consistent with the prospects of getting Nigeria or the people of Africa or ECOWAS in the development world map where they will be relevant and making contributory um, uh, inputs to the benefits and interests of our own African people. Okay, General, um, if I may, my thought is that you're a retired general. You have seen coups in your time as a serving officer, a general, and you have seen when you left office across Africa. A number of coups have happened since you retired. Now, help us understand, when you have a situation where states or nations around one country are beginning to want to dictate to coup leaders what they can or cannot do, what they should or should not do, the thought will be that they will dig their foot in and just go with whatever they want, especially in view of Mali, Burkina Faso, wanting to send warplanes to them and saying we're supporting, and also having Wagner wanting to get in through Russia to say we will support you. What is your thought? How do you think this can be handled to ensure that things don't get worse? Well, if you are talking about... Um Going in or with uh, going into the country as a ECOWAS force uh, in an aggressive way, not exhausting diplomatic uh, uh, discussions and getting to a resolution, things are bound to get worse. Not only that they will get worse, you cannot, as at now, foresee how it will be concluded and what successes or failures they are going to achieve will move. ECOWAS, Africa, or the third world forward. I think really the basic question is that should ECOWAS um, uh, undertake uh, this kind of uh, battle mission against uh, a fellow African uh, country under an economic um, uh, arrangement? I think world security has sufficiently been arranged and that we have hierarchy of organizations that if consultations and discussions are made with them, like the African Union, for example, the United Nations uh, security agencies, then we will not make such blunder as to try um, to encourage uh, uh, warfare 
particularly in our state of economy and, um, and, 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 our, and, and politics, and the fact that we, we know that putting all things together, Nigeria in ECOWAS is being used as a bait, but the real intentions are very clear. As I said earlier, is a manipulation for a third world chaos and, um, uh, and a search for a viable uh, new uh, world political power order. Right. Uh, we've said all of this. We've talked about the Russia conundrum. We've talked about the Agna. We've talked about what ECOWAS is doing. I'd like to ask, are you comfortable with this three-year transition period? this uh, military leaders in Niger are putting forward? Well, it's not a matter of my comfort. As I said earlier, it, there is a sovereign country. There is government in that country. You have not uh, approved, or there is perhaps not no approval for, for coups. But coups have been taking place. And democracies have evolved from coups, like in Nigeria. Uh, we had several coups, and now we are still um, in, in the clouds with, uh, with uh, democracy. I think I have said as uh, uh, earlier that we should leave the people minding their business, arrive at their own uh, um, uh, government in the form that expresses their wish. After all, there are governments that have no written constitution. There are governments who evolved their own written constitution by uh, modern coups, by hacking even their, their, their monarch, and by the general being magnanimous and saying, look, I, I am not taking um, the, 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 the mantle of being a head of state. And that's how the, the British government has evolved their government, without any writing. And they have a constitutional uh, monarchy. Oh. And it's called a democracy. They have a parliamentary system. We have chosen the presidential system. The Nigerians are free to choose what system goes well for them in the, in, in the present state of um, affairs of political uh, development. In the, in, in the continent. All right, well, the, inter, in, the, the bottom line, really, uh, is that I think if we believe in democracy, we believe in freedom, we believe in um, uh, liberty of uh, expression. Therefore, we must allow people these same beliefs that we have as a sovereign people to express themselves. We will, of course, interfere, ensuring that there is this fundamental right according to, to humanity, and ensure that we assist where possible to, to make the, the evolution less painful um, as it appears to be if there is always uh, the, the, the overhanging uh, threat of, um, uh, of um, uh, military incursion. All right, thank you. Uh, so General Harun, I hear you where you talk about um, it being a democratic country and we should respect the democracy. But that's the grouse of, or that's the issue um, for ECOWAS in itself, that the military hunter has taken over power in an unconstitutional manner. And not only is he a threat to democracy in Niger, which it already is, but to the other African countries bordering this nation, especially because we've had coups in Burkina Faso, in Mali, in Guinea very recently. Is this not in itself a threat to democracy? Well, I, I, I don't seem to agree that it is a threat to democracy because um, democracy itself, even though it is viewed as the best form of government, does not evolve um, in a de democratic way, I have cited an example where there is a practicing parliamentary system in a democracy, but it did not involve on the basis of democratic um, 
uh, movement or democratic instig uh, instigation. And none of these other countries that have um, gotten governed through, through coups have been challenged the way the, um, the ECOWAS is now undertaking to challenge Niger. And the question is why? They are supporting themselves because they believe fundamentally they have a right for their people to, um, to find how they should be governance and to accept what constitutes good governance to them. As at now, the people of uh, um, Niger seem to be saying that we have a government, but it's not a good government. And even though it is constitutional, it is not fulfilling the ends of democracy and good governance or, or freedom. And we wish to change it. And we're having a plan of uh, three years in order to evolve what would be more acceptable, because after all, the government is for the people, by the people, if it is a true democracy. It is an expression of the sovereignty of the people. And I think that um, outsiders should uh, uh, get involved in a way that they are dictating what should be their own democratic process or democratic results. All right, um, General, let me ask you this. Uh, just recently, the president of Liberia, George Weah, he said that Africa should focus more on sit tight presidents, those who want third terms and fourth terms and want to be there forever until death do them part. That those people are the ones that African leaders should focus on. And it looks like his way of uh, voting in support of that is by not showing up at the meeting of ECOWAS and sending his Minister of Foreign Affairs. Maybe, maybe not. But at the end of the day, what would you advise African leaders to do when it's to do with those leaders that want second and third and fourth terms in office or want to remain forever, those leaving room for people to plan coups to remove them because they've passed their sell-by date? What's your thoughts, sir? Well, my, my thoughts really is that uh, since the independence, the African countries, the post uh, former colonial countries, have been evolving. And since then, sit, sit down uh, uh, presidents, I think um, they have overcome their, their, their useful, usefulness. But we are sufficiently organized with a system through which the opinions of the heads of states or heads of uh, government, African political uh, leaders, could make their views uh, hard. They don't have to resort to um, uh, invasion in order to, um, uh, to assert their, their opinion that the people should be giving, or there should be higher value given to the people's participation in government. And there are institutions that they can exploit to ensure, um, en ensure that the process of uh, enthroning a government in these sit-down uh, 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 countries are uh, adopted. And I think that um, when uh, Gaddafi was, uh, was alive, he tried to motivate the African leaders towards a, a stronger form of constitutional government that the people will believe in and that there will be no room for the kind of uh, sitting um, uh, 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 governments and presidencies that uh, we have, like uh, our neighbor. Uh, I think that they are an aberration to our present state of um, uh, the de development as uh, political states. So they should be removed, but we shouldn't wait until they are removed by coup. Then we start organizing an invasion on their country. I think diplomacy should be exhausted. It's painstaking, it takes uh, 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 takes time. And um, the, 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 the governments who are spare, uh, spearheading uh, diplomacy and negotiations for better forms of government and governance should themselves be aware 
that um, they are talking from a very firm, credible, moral base as uh, political leaders in a democracy. Okay. We have uh, talked about uh, all of this. Your position has constantly been, oh, let us you know, allow Niger to do their thing and all of that. They are a sovereign nation, and we get that position on the point of view. But I'd like to ask you this. What would you now say about countries like Mali and Burkina Faso that have already sent in warplanes to get the Nigerians ready for an eventuality of war? What would you say as regards that? Is that not provocative in itself? Well, they are, they are behaving through to their own path and belief of uh, the evolution of the independence and the rights of the people uh, in their countries and to give support um, to the governments or ideologies they, they are hand in gloves with or or they support. Um, I think if you have a, a family, Julian, no matter how, how, how weak or light uh, uh, in power it is, you would like to chip in and um, support them uh, where you are in agreement. After all, it's the same thing the ECOWAS are doing. Uh, they don't believe in unconstitutional um, government in this day and time. But they have rather sidestepped the procedures through the negotiations, diplomatic negotiations, or through diplomatic um, uh, dialogue with African Union and through agencies of the, uh, of, of the United uh, uh, Nations. I, I think. Um, that the supporting countries are, are supported because they believe in the objectives which they themselves have set for their, for their people. Right. Um, the, the Nigerian position in the ECOWAS initiative, I think that is one that should uh, uh, seek for leadership um, uh, of the sub-region in a sustainable path or trajectory that will occur for the future of the, of the, of the, of the region. I, I believe that um, uh, aggressive diplomacy or the aggressive uh, uh, kinetic engagement has no certainty of its end. Uh, or as, as, uh, how long it will be. And the postulation actually is that uh, uh, is, is a proxy war where the beneficiaries of the, of the combat are lying down behind, instigating the, the, the warfare, who will end up as the, the, the best uh, beneficiaries of the war. Thank you so much. All right, my great and wonderful people. Sorry, say we just need to leave you to watch this interview from the beginning to the end so that you will feel comprehend the totality of what await Africans as a whole and also the ones when ABC, the one put hand for ECOWAS back and also these are our leaders to push us into this uh, doom. All right, I'll leave you to share your own opinion with us on the comment section, even as we draw the line of this very broadcast here. We will see you again when we see you. Remember, we love you all. Bye-bye.